You're watching Inside the NBA, brought to you by the all-electric EV6 from Kia, official automotive partner of the NBA. Kia, movement that inspires. She wants to <laughs> a record of 9-21 and 21 may not impress you, but when that record is in games you trail going to the fourth quarter, it was the second best mark in the league during the regular season. That record belongs to the Memphis Grizzlies, who staged a fourth quarter rally to win game three and needed to do that again Tuesday night in game five in a series tied at two. We head to FedEx Forum to watch Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards and John Morant. Man, it's been a fun series to watch between these two young teams. Number yes, one has. and two in pace. Nice, nice pass. Oh, in the playoffs, uh, Brandon Clark from Morant there. Anthony Edwards. Yeah, I love when he goes to the rim. He opens up his three, but he's much more effective as a big guard getting to that basket. He's a big guard. Look at this dude. Yeah, there he was. Bain. Mr. Bain, but he's a problem. Edwards for three, he had 22. Bulldogs. Yep. Minnesota up 55-53 at the break. Hey, Which Mar one's Usher? D. Morant. I have no idea. Man, these guys got a lot of money for all these big old teams they have. Oh, you have a you don't think Usher has, has a lot of money? Okay, Cat. Yeah. 60-59, yeah. yeah. Minnesota, and then they open it up a little bit. Towns knocking down a three. They would lead by 13. Honey, we had a discussion. Oh, don't do it. Oh, man. Oh, Boy. Tom Morant. Oh, yeah, don't stay. Look at that. Don't, don't take off. Who is off. that? Oh, uh, Beasley? Yeah, Beasley. Poster time. 85-74, oh. though, Damn. was the Minnesota lead after three. Cat waiting outside the paint, uh, outside the three-point line. We had a discussion which cat was going to show up. Showed up pretty big tonight. Showed up big yeah. today. They sure do a lot of talking for a team that lost. <laughs> they were up big at that point. Bain. That's Bain a corner three. Between them telling people to shut up and doing a little small thing. Now, hey, this dude was Brandon Clark. He, he was the player of the game. Oh, of my gosh. That is how you go get a rebound. Yeah, Brandon Clark, to me, was the MVP of this game. 10 nothing run. They were down. Meow. Pounds again for 3-106-102. Here's Clark again. Oh, good. That was a big oh, one of the Durant. biggest plays oh. of the game. His only three of the game. Looks like when I tapped tap the back to Big Shot Bob that one time. Oh, that was like that. 107 to 106 in favor of the goal. Oh, good pass. Anthony Edwards. There goes another, three. another coach that does not foul. He got a foul. Tied at 109. That was a hell of a play call. That was a hell of a play call, but if you foul him, it wouldn't. Oh, they got lucky. Man, you cannot go for this. Oh, because oh, Ja will do that to you. Yeah, you cannot go for that steal. 30 points, 13 rebounds, and nine assists okay. for Ja Moran. Light work on a Tuesday. And that is your ball game. What a game. The Memphis Grizzlies. Rotate. Oh, that's as soon as you catch it, you say it's a 6'8 six, six, and under league. Get to the rim. They are the first team in NBA history with multiple wins in a series when trailing by double digits going to the fourth quarter. They've done it twice in this series. They now lead the series three games to two. Um, Man, 23 turnovers by Minnesota. Mm. Again, turnovers been killing them. And um, the uh, Memphis Grizzlies pull one out, 111-109. Uh, Chris Haynes after the game. Walk me down, talk me down. That last play, out of the time. Coach called my number. Pretty much an isolation play. Uh, <laughs> That's the one right there. That's the one right there. I got y'all, man. But Ant-Man took a gamble. I caught a hell of a pass by DB, man, and I seen the rim. And it's pretty much just go finish the play at that point, and I made a layup. Ja, what kind of started this run here was at the end of that third quarter. That emphatic dunk down there. Talk to, talk about that play right there. Uh, I'm out there battling right now, man. Legs feel like I got nice in them, pretty much. Uh, but, you know, he took a gamble, tried to beat me over the screen, and at that point, I seen him try to take up for a charge, but it was a guard. I know I could have finished over him. So. My view of it was crazy, just like baseline. But it's up there, maybe top three. It's hard to get as excited because I've been seeing him do all these things every game. So um, 
add that to the list of the cool stuff. But it was dope. Just the playoffs, you know. You feel like the game we've played today and the defense we played today and everything, and I, I feel like a lot of us felt, you know, from media to fans to ourselves, you know, you feel like you would win this game. Just the game of basketball sucks sometimes, and this is one of those days. You guys make a routine out of this. Coming back from deficits, coming back and getting it. Yeah, we got to stop that. We got to stop that because we see who we're capable of when, you know, when adversity hits. And we start how we play when, we, when we're down. You know, we can beat this team by double digits as you see in the game, too. So we just got to have that game two mindset coming in to the next game. Go ahead and, you know, bring the energy from the jump and, you know, get a win and advance. Minnesota was 42-8 and eight this year, leading going to the fourth quarter. They've lost two games uh, under those circumstances here in this series. And more uh, Hungry for More presented by Taco Bell. John Morant, 18 points in the fourth quarter. Hey, you know, he's just like, uh, just like in the Phoenix game, Mikael Bridges, 24 points in the second half. Uh, Minnesota turning that thing over like crazy. 23, the second most in their playoff history. They doubled up Memphis from the three-point line, but the Grizzlies win it 111 to 109. This was huge yeah. to win this game after you're down double digits in the fourth. Yeah, I, well, again, if you're looking at Memphis, you say, well, we can't get down that much. But if, if we've been a soda, it's like, how do you hold on to a lead? And what are you, what are you not doing to continue to hold on to a lead? I think overall, sometimes when I'm watching the game, I'm like, oh, well, that's a great, oh, that's a tough shot. That's a tough shot. Um, and I think at times Minnesota has some tough shots, and they're not getting into a, a when they get up, into a plethora of just let's get a good shot. Uh, we don't have to take the home run three. We don't have to, you know, throw the alley-oop on the break. Uh, and I think that's where – the mishaps to me happen, oh. and then, then all of a sudden it yeah. starts going sliding you, down. You, you know, Ernie, when you have a big lead, you have to do stupid stuff for the other team to come back because they take bad shots, you factor that in, then you turn the ball over. That's why, you, that's why they keep blowing big leads. When they get a lead, it's like they're like, let me get mine. Like, it doesn't go to Anthony or Cat. Like, everybody has the green light. And, and Ken and Shaq will tell you, Everybody on a team can't have the green light. That, it, it doesn't work like that. You, you're not going to be successful. Like some guys, you have to know your role and what you're good at. When I watch Minnesota play, man, they got a tremendous amount of talent. But you're like, and I say the halftime, I said, they're always going to let you back in the game between bad shots and turnovers. And it came back to bite them again. And it comes down to decisions, too. I mean, Anthony Edwards, if he has it to do over again, doesn't gamble on that steal. Yeah. But, but, they had, right but again, at that point, the game was over. They got lucky because, man, another... Well, it was tied when that happened. Uh, no, 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 but I'm saying, though, when you blow that big lead, especially on the road, you... you, you but I, I was disappointed because I don't understand why Memphis didn't file in that three-point situation. Uh, I, would, I don't let nobody run an out-of-bounds play and hit a three. If you lose that game, you're like, man, we should have filed. Have you ever had a coach that say you deserve to lose that game? After we won, though. No. After, after, after we, we uh, uh, not, not Maybe once or twice, yeah. Yeah, Pat Riley and Phil used to do that. Minnesota, they deserve to lose that game. 23 turnovers, you had them. So, you, you know, I know they're a young team, but at some point you have to say, okay, this is working. This is why we're up double digits in the fourth quarter. Let's slow it down. Let's come back to this. When this doesn't work, let's do something else. Like you said, me and Chuck were sitting in the room, and they take shots. That's a bad shot. That's a bad shot. That's a bad shot. You take all these bad shots. Then you have a coach after they capitalize on your bad shots and your turnovers. Then you got a coach on the other side that's not going to call a timeout. The crowd got into the game, and Jack got the dunk. We knew it was over by then, but they definitely deserved to, to lose that yeah. game. That struggle continues for Jaron Jackson, too. He fouled out of this game, 12 points and five rebounds, fouled out in not, in not very many minutes uh, either. But Brandon Clark was the guy. Yeah, Brandon who, Clark, which, uh, uh, shout out to uh, Coach Few up at Gonzaga. I mean, he, man, he does a really good job of teaching his player. That kid to me is like, whoever's getting these players in Memphis, they're doing a fantastic job. Clark, Bain. Guys that you ain't really heard of. Brooks. Uh, Brooks also. You heard but, but you heard of Brooks because he's been around a little bit. But you draft Brandon Clark and Bain. That kid, to me, he is one of the most underrated, terrific players in this league. You put those two guys, man, this team from Memphis, 
they got a really bright future. They will have a chance to close it out on Friday in Minnesota, where the Timberwolves will try to send it back to Memphis for a game seven. When he hears the Taco Bell <laughs> gong. I, I love tacos. What's up, Dion? <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, come on. Man, our production crew, best in the business, but getting a lot of uh, getting a lot of uh, social attention here lately. We'll be back.